Good morning. It is Saturday, October 27th, and this is Lisa Copeland with 15 Minutes of Fierce. <clears throat> Can you guys tell I'm a little raspy on my voice this morning? It was funny. I was going to an event last night, and I was talking to my mom and who says, I don't want to shout out. I'm on there. You might be embarrassed. So, mom, you're allowed to watch your daughter on her show. Anyways, and she said, I had bronchitis, and she's been really sick, and I'm like, I never get bronchitis. And then this morning I woke up and I said, this coughing. See, this is this is the universe. Don't be cocky about thinking about not getting sick. How are you guys this morning? Paul and Trendy and Michael and Laura and Jeff, you guys rock. This is early for a Saturday morning. Um, okay, so what is this show about? This show is about being unapologetically fierce 365 days a year. And, you know, fierce is an acronym. The F is to be fearless. The I is to take initi initiative. The E is to be enthusiastic. Who wants to do business with Debbie Downer? Nobody. The R is to be relentless. That means you never give up. You, you have to, you, you see things through to the very end. Um, the C is to crush approval addiction. There are so many times in life that we don't get done what we want to get done because we're worried about what somebody else thinks. And the E, of course, is the most important and fierce, and that is to execute. Because you can do all of the above, but if you don't get off the couch, like I like to say, and you go execute, then it's not happening for you. Uh, Michelle, good morning. Rick, good morning. Jenny, good morning. Michelle, Nigel, Iona, um, you know, Trendy checked back in today. I love it. You guys are so loyal and so dedicated to being fierce. And um, so as we wrap what I think is the world's greatest book over today and tomorrow, Napoleon Hill, Outwetting the Devil, you know, it really, it came to me this morning. I thought, okay, what am I going to talk about through this book? And um, you know, I want to just revisit really quickly the seven principles that, that Hill says, because we finished yesterday with caution, um, but the th seven things that Hill says that we have to do to have complete to attain complete spiritual, mental, and, phys and physical freedom. And for those of you catching replays or those of you watching the show for the first time, this is 15 Minutes of Fierce with Lisa Copeland. And it's just 15 minutes of solid motivation taking you on my own journey that I do every single morning to make me a better me. And, and you guys are so good at holding me accountable. And it, anyways, I love you guys. You guys know that. Um, so... The first one of the seven that we covered was definiteness of purpose. Why do you do what you do? Mastery over self, learning from adversity, controlling environmental influences, meaning, as my dear friend Sharon Lecter says, the power of association. Number five is time, giving permanency to positive rather than negative thought habits and developing wisdom. Number six is harmony, and that's when you're acting when you're acting with definiteness of purpose rather than negative thought habits, excuse me, harmony is with, uh, acting with definiteness of purpose to become the dominating influence in your own mental, spiritual, and physical environment. So what that means, the harmony is, is that you're walking in it every day, that you believe that why you do what you do, and that's where the harmony comes in because that's where balance comes in. That's where, that's, that's where you know, you're willing to um, do whatever it takes because you believe to your very soul that what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing. You know, and so many of you on this are world changers. Anthony, good morning, my friend. Um, you know, so many of you are world changers. So, te and then of course, yesterday we talked about proceeding with caution. You know, how easy is it to just blast off an email or a text to somebody when you're mad, you know, in business or in life? You know, so it's really just about slowing down, kind of. You know, not, you know, not dealing in a high emotional state, because remember, we talked about if you're high emotionally in a high emotional state, you're operating with low intelligence. And come on, let's face it. We've all done it. We've all done it. So it's not me preaching to all of you. This is me saying I've done it, too. But I think that if we keep things like this top of mind awareness, then we're not as apt to do it again. And that's what makes us better. Right. Is that when you you know, what is the. Um, Definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And that's what this show's about, trying to like, you know, weed out, you know, the best and the worst of us and then, you know, keeping things top of mind. And that's why I loved outwitting the double. What do you guys have to say this morning? N Nigel, good morning, my dear. Uh, Michelle, hello. Josh, what's up, family? Ricky Miller, good morning. Um, yeah, so I've been, you know, but I'll tell you the overarching premise 
of this book is how to deal with fear. And it's so interesting. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit a taboo subject this morning. I don't know, because I guess I can. And I've got my coffee. I'm pretty fired up. Uh, and that's politics. We have a big political race coming up in Texas. It's for uh, U.S. Senate. And it doesn't matter if you're right or you're left. That's not what this is about. And when you, I have found that when I talk with people, that they're operating in fear. They're afraid that this guy won't win. They're afraid that this guy will win. Or they're afraid this guy will win and this guy won't win. And remember when I said danger is real and fear is a choice? And so I listened to both sides. I'm, I'm pretty good about that. You know, I listened to both sides of why people believe what they believe. And every time I, I hear about this candidate, it's, well, I'm afraid this is going to happen, Lisa. And then I hear about this candidate. Well, I'm afraid this is going to happen. Okay. Are you just afraid it's going to happen? Or do you have proof it's going to happen? Or is this propaganda in the press it's going to happen? So how much time and headspace do we spend in fear you know, um, uh, it's just, it's amazing to me. And that's one of the things that this book will help you push through. It's to repurpose your fear, right? We need to live in the reality, you know, and what I think I've learned about um, politics in this country is that, thank you, God, but we still keep moving forward, whether it's the right, the left, man, woman, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. I mean, our country is going to continue to move forward. And um, I think if we could just stop a lot of the rhetoric and to me, rhetoric, one million percent, if, if, you know, just, if you just break it down and you like, it's like an onion, you just layer back the, um, the skin, rhetoric and all, it's fear, fear, false evidence appearing real. Let's see what you guys have to say about that. Dean says, all right, uh, ready for the day, Miss McCain. <laughs> oh, McLean. Okay. I was like, Miss McCain. Ooh, he just passed away. Okay. Um, Megan, good morning. How are you, my friend? I want to hear what you guys have to say about um, fear and how you see that people operate in fear. And I'm telling you, the elections are a great time to talk about it. I mean, I've heard some of the craziest stuff from friends who are right and friends that are left and ones that tend to be a little bit more down the middle. And, um, and I'm like, like, do you really believe that the world's coming to an end tomorrow if this happens? Like, it's not. Newsflash. So, you know, I mean, I, I think that it's it, it's really getting a hold of your fears. And then number one, and uh, I posted on my Facebook yesterday, but my one of my best friends in the world. I mean, we, we're pretty polar opposite, not opposite on what we believe, but, but what, you know, what, what we think the outcome of things will be if, if one person's elected over the other. But, you know, the best part was is that we could sit and just have this like totally rational conversation last night. And, you know, and I said, well, this is what I believe and this is why. And she said, well, you're crazy because this is what I believe and this is why. And, you know, anyways, whatever. But it's like we could have the conversation. I don't think any of us walked away changed for it. I think both of us believe what we believe and that's OK. But we can still walk away and be the best of friends, you know, and that's what's happening. You know, fear is it's it's the great leveler of fear people and of countries and of democracy. I believe that. And it also separates people. You know, it separates people. And how does it do it? Because it it, it creates polarizing opinions. And now all of a sudden, you know, um, you can't, you know, we saw this during the presidential elections. It's like families can't get together for Thanksgiving because everyone's mad at each other. And it's like, come on, people. Come on. Um, trendy, great topic during this time. Yeah. Unplug and change your life. Turn off the negative news networks. Oh, God, I did that a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> Paul says, to overcome fear, false evidence appearing real, you need to have luck. Labor under correct knowledge. Huh. I've never seen that before. Um, I've seen fear, Paul is an acronym, face everything and rise. I've also seen, of course, false evidence appearing real. But what do you guys think about, you know, having conversations with, with you know, especially during this political season? See, it doesn't matter who I'm voting for. It doesn't matter who you're voting for. But, you know, it, it gets down to at the end of the day, we've got to be able to discuss it, you know, and um, it's fear. It's 100 percent fear. The whole way I was driving over to this event, I was on the phone with somebody and they're, they're, they're just terrified of some things that are going on in Texas right now. And so if this person gets elected, this is going to happen. If this person doesn't get elected, this is going to happen. And this and that. It's just like, 
and and I'm and I, I'm not discounting any of it. It might all be true. I haven't gotten that deep on it, but you know, this is a pretty smart person. Um, but that being said, it's fear. You know, and I just think that that's the way the devil, whatever whatever your devil is, that's the way that those negative thoughts get in and they destroy our confidence. They destroy relationships. They, they keep us living in fear. Fear robs our peace. When our peace is robbed, we're not happy people. Like, how do we get rid of fear? I want to hear from you guys about this. Uh, Jeff says, life is short to have fear occupy so much time. God, my, guys, you guys, my contacts are not working well this morning at all. I think it's because I slept in them. Uh, Nigel says, I might just be fear neutral. Well, girl, then you need to preach. You need to tell us how to go fear neutral. I think that's a good one. Like, right? Danger is real. Fear is a choice. Um, Michelle, I choose to live by faith over fear, which I love. I love. Um, but Michelle, I'm going to tell you, I think a lot of people throw that out the window when it comes to politics. I do. Um, again, I've, I've, I've just never seen our country so divided um, as it is today. And again, it doesn't matter who you vote for. But it's just the, the lack of being able to communicate in a civil manner between somebody who voted right and somebody who voted left without hurling insults at each other. You're stupid. You're this. You're that. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's unprecedented. Uh, Anthony, fear ruins our passions. Yes. Michelle, the media exists for the purpose of fear, mongering, and division. We need to rise together. I love it. And that's why I wanted this show to be positive. You know, I mean, that's why I just did. I, you know, I wanted 15 minutes of taking a journey because at the end of the day, you know, you're in control of your mind. I'm in control of my mind. Okay, we got about two minutes until we wrap. For those of you who are catching the replay, we're talking about outwitting the devil. We're talking about that um, repurposing your fear and walking in your power. And speaking of walking in your power and your best brand voice ever, um, we're filling up quickly on... Um, the uh, Be Fierce 15, Building Your Own Brand, which is going to be a great live course. And we're doing it free this first time out because I want to get all of your testimonials. That's full disclosure to my group here. And then after that, the course is going out at about $997. So we're going to take the first hundred that sign up. So I'm, And I'm going to teach it live. It's really great because we're all out there to build a brand. It isn't what you sell. It's what you stand for. If you stand for something big enough, people know what you're selling. And we're going to show you how to amplify your personal brand, how to build that fierce brand that people choose you over your competitors. So sign up for the course. Uh, and Nigel, I know you'll write this down, sister, www.bebfierce365.com backslash free training, backslash free training, bfierce365 backslash free training. And um, it's a good course. It really is. And it's got workbooks. It's got all kinds of stuff. And the only thing I'm asking from you guys is if you love it, you find value and it changes your world that you write us a great testimonial. So we'll go out to the open market and sell it that, you know, it's been tried and true. Uh, David, good morning. Um, gosh, I wish I could see this. Uh, oh, good. It looks like he's tagging people. Also, if you um, like the Big Sellers Club, and a lot of you guys are in it already, but share that out too. I mean, we've uh, we've gotten several hundred new signups in the last couple of days because of this tribe right here. This is the most powerful tribe that I've got because you're willing to get up every morning and do the work. And so I appreciate you. Um, tomorrow, we're going to start on, I have such a time with this, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, because I am a firm believer that the laws of success never change, whether they were written in 1930 or 2030, um, the basic principles of success stay the same. And so we're really going to dig into Think and Grow Rich because I'm so surprised about how many people haven't read it. And I'm telling you, it is the, the success manual for anybody. I don't care if you're in the car business or you're in the real estate business or you're in the financial services business, software, hardware, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, whatever you may be, this book is a game changer and we're going to dig in. All right. So I'm going to just sign off here. It's that time. Nigel, Renee, Max, thank you for joining. David, thank you for joining. Anthony, you're always the best. David is tagging all the salespeople. Yeah, you go, David. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, all of you. And just, you know, 
as I leave you today, you know, commit to be unapologetically fierce 365. But I'm just asking that, you know, during this political season, this next 10 days, um, that we that we operate with an open mind, open heart. I'm not asking you to change who you do, what you do, all that. I'm just asking to show people that you're willing to collaborate, listen, and um, you know, have open and honest conversations. Again, I'm not asking anybody to um, change their mind, but let's just be, let's just operate, you know, not in fear, but in power, and walk in our power, and be unapologetically fierce. All right, I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye bye.